this. And record. All right, we're live. Voice of Backgammon with Jack Edelson uh, doing live XG transcription. We're live here from the California State Championship, California streaming. Uh, I'll be playing with Ben Friesen, and we're going to play Paul McGrell and Blake, Fle Blake Fleetwood. We're very excited about that. It's very exciting to play one of the giants of the game. So I'm going to leave. This is streaming, and uh, we're going to fix the uh, notation about it's not a jackpot for 19 points. I'm going to leave it to you, Jack. Thank you so much for your help. Can I click on that here, or...? Oh, no, it's on the other right. side. Yeah. We'll get it fixed over there. there. All right. Oh, that's on your side? All right, excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Oh, my pleasure. All right, so uh, we're uh, just getting ready to get started here. Um, just to uh, introduce the players here, um, Paul McGrill is, um, for those of you experienced with backgammon, you, you all will know his name. He wrote what was for many years the, the Bible for backgammon players, still a great book, backgammon, back in the uh, 70s. Um, and still a fantastic player and um, just a, uh, a great guy, very willing to share his knowledge about the game, which is very immense. Um, also an excellent poker player. Blake Fleetwood, also a very good player. He's uh, been doing a lot uh, for the game, helping, um, for example, with the Sochi tournaments that believe um, involved in uh, helping with uh, travel arrangements for a lot of players and um, helped uh, procure some special flight deals for uh, U.S. tournaments for USBJF members last year. Um, ben Friesen, Larry Schiller, both done a lot of work with the Bo Voice of Backgammon, very, very strong players as well. Ben Friesen's uh, in Flint, Michigan. Larry and Schiller in Connecticut, and um, should be an excellent match. Now this is doubles, which means that these players are, the teams are consulting amongst themselves, and you'll be hearing, you'll be hearing their uh, comment, their conversations about the play. So I'll try to shut up a bit, so that you guys can hear, um, you guys can hear what the players have to say. Um, you can see the XG um, results and um, on your screen. So just uh, waiting to get started here, but again, this should be a very good match. It's a seven points, um, and um, it looks good. All right. So a six-two, and they free Fleetwood and McGrill make the normal play. And it's double twos. I believe you make the. So 
So the players often study the opening responses, what you do on your first roll, and the players don't seem to remember. I believe this is correct. And that is the right play. It's clear. And there's already a die down this early in the match. Bob Wachtel uh, walks up behind uh, Ben Friesen. You see him there in a 6 2 is an excellent shake. And he makes both points. Now, 6 5. Not a bad outcome. Get a three pip re lead in the race. I apologize for the video quality here, it's a bit uh, shaky. The internet down here is not the most reliable, and we apologize if that affects the quality of the speed. 54. Already a tough decision here. Besides the hit with a five, I guess uh, very often when your opponent's one checker back, you're you're more focused on attacking than priming. But uh, that wasn't quite right. Actually, the safer play of coming in was right. But I don't know. I like this better. You know, this is, like Ben says, they're up in the race, and this is just a natural play with the double fives anyway. If the race is at all close, this is what you want to do. And they escape the double threes. So just make up your board in preparation for a shot. This is actually slightly wrong. And the reason this is slightly wrong... It's slightly wrong because when you're... The race is very close, you don't always have the timing to maintain that 18 point. Because you've got 36 pips tied up and maintain that anchor. So even if you're slightly behind in the race, you might want to bring it up. And indeed, it was better to play from that back anchor, bring it up to the 15 point, um, rather than trying to hold this holding game that they don't necessarily have the timing for. So making those two home board points is actually slightly wrong in this position. Now double twos for Friesen and Schiller. They have to decide, do they want to bring four checkers down from the midpoint? They get a nine pip lead and they've reduced contact. I think that's what I would do. They could also play to the nine point, hoping that they have those good landing spots. I like four down. And this is right. This is, well, it's actually maybe slightly better to play to the nine. Yeah, it would have been better. Double threes. And then comes in. Actually, they should have just raced. They're up three in the race. It's better to just race there. It's a slight error by, uh, Fleetwood and McGrill. I think that's a good play there. There's no need to worry about keeping your rank, your points there. 41 for McGrill and Fleetwood. 4-1, you're going to bring one in. And and uh, split, they decide to split the 11 point for the most diversification. That seems reasonable. This looks right. They, they, this way, if they roll a set, they'll be able to clear the 11 point because they've gotten down to four checkers there. So I think that's a good idea. 4-1 just brings one in. Larry says that. 
But it does matter because if you roll a good set, you're going to be way ahead in the race. You do want to clear. Uh, you do want to get down to four checkers just in case you roll the big set. Double sixes. That's a huge roll for Fleetwood and McGrill. Gives them a commanding 19 pip lead. So uh, Friesen and Schiller have to um, roll well to take. Oh, God. Um, what's going on here? 6 4. So he plays in. Sorry, there's a uh, technical glitch on our end. And uh, double ones, they did not double. That's a big miss double. They were well ahead in the race. Big miss double. And now six five. And now they've uh, caught up. So um, that was a, a big miss double, but it turns out to be fortunate. Alright, so they bring it into the six. This seems sensible. And four, five. Plays normally. Four, three. You bring it in with the four and take the three off. You want to strip the three when you got a stack six. You need spares on the four, and you don't need spares on the three because the threes play well from the six point. What's that roll? Now 3-2 here, and they rightly, again, you don't want to fill in the three-point. Actually, the bot slightly likes that, surprisingly to me. Double three is a very good roll for Friesen and Schiller. And um, double twos takes some checkers off. Now, can Friesen and Schiller double this? Um, actually, will they take... Will they take them off? They decide not to. So it's an even up the distribution, which is actually slightly better. Now Friesen and Scheller are up 3.3 pips in the race. It's um, they 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 decided um, not to double. Um, this seems to me like a good double. Three pips within a short race. It's it's close. I'd have to do some math here, um, and even then I might be wrong. Um, double three with the extra checker off. I'd say a double, and it is a slight double. Double threes is a good shake. Six three is a weak enough response that it's got to be a double, and probably not a take at this point. Um, yeah, this cannot. This is probably a small drop. Um, two checkers extra off. Six off. Three, also, Fleetwood and McGrill have the checker on the ace point, which is a little bit of extra wasted. Um, so there's a slightly better distribution for Friesen and Schiller. With six pips in this shorter race, it seems like a drop. We apologize, by the way. The audio from the players is not where we'd like it to be. Um, we really can't hear them that well. So um, I'm just going to try to fill in with my own commentary. This has been a you know racing game, and uh, Schiller and Friesen roll the bigger numbers. I have no doubt that they'll double this. This 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 is um, with six pips lead and two extra checkers off, slightly better distribution. It's a big double. And they double. Very clear. It actually turns out they're more than 80% to win this game. So when there's more than 80% to win this game, you're, it's definitely a big drop. I mean, you normally need... Wow, they take it up. They take it. With six pips down, they take it. Oh, wait. I've got the wrong position on, uh, on the, the XG here. All right, so I made a mistake.
So um, all my commentary was wrong because I had the wrong position up on XG. Um, so I was looking at my XG board and not the actual position. And I uh, thought they had an extra checker off. So that changes everything. All right, I'll just... Um, So, um, let's pick up here. Sorry, I just uh, made a mistake in the transcription. When uh, Team Viewer uh, conked out. Double sixes, and now Schiller and Friesen have lost, because even if they roll a big set, yes, McGrill and Fleetwood could, uh, could roll 2-1, but they have the cubes, so you're obviously not taking. A two nothing in favor of McGrill and Fleetwood. So very often with doubles, players will uh, you know you have one player starts rolling and um, until that player loses, that player keeps rolling, and then when that player loses, player switch. It's not required. It's just often what's done. Yeah. So I apologize for my mistakes uh, last game. I simply had the wrong position up on my uh, on my board, and I was. Uh, counting the race incorrectly. So those of you uh, wondering what the heck I was talking about, that explains it. So uh, they decide to slot, technically wrong, but who cares? Small, 3-2 down. This is clearly the right way to play double fours. You make both five points, you got an excellent position, you're putting pressure on McGrill's blots, um, just getting a really good game. This seems to me to be clearly right. Three, two, makes the ten point. And then he has a choice. Does he play 13, nine? Does he play six to four? Does he split? Splitting seems wrong. You're splitting in front of the stacks three and five away while still leaving a six shot. The as McGrill was saying, right, if he plays the two down, if he makes the 11 point, there's no good three. Uh, oh, but that's what he wants to do. He plays there. That is, that is not right. He actually should have made both blocking points. Actually, that's a good point. You're leaving a blot on the midpoint, but you're leaving a blot somewhere. You might as well make these uh, good points. 6-3. So I'm freezing, consider slotting. They could do this, which um, coming in with the 3 improves the distribution a lot. But it leaves the slot in the, in the wrong place. And that um, here you've got two two good covers, twos and fours. The other way, sixes break the midpoint to cover. So I can see arguments for both plays. I'd probably uh, play in. This just looks wrong. I'm going to leave a shot. I'd rather leave it on the four point than leaving two blots and leaving a shot on the two point. Just, you know, it's not that many different shots, and you're leaving fewer blots and being more productive by coming in. Actually, it turns out that maybe they missed a double before this roll. A little bit of a surprise, but good commanding position. I like this. I like this play. Let's see if it's right. Yes, it is. Uh, it's close between thirteen four and thirteen seven eight five. So five two, and five two. A uh, tough play for uh, McGrill and Fleetwood. Not a good roll at all. And I'll split. You got to get something going here. This looks right to me. Actually, it's as Freeze and Chiller said. They got eleven checkers in the zone. They've got the anchor. Um, there's really no game here for Fleetwood and McGrill. It's a um, 
They've got a checker deep. They've got no points made. They've got no play. They take. All right. It's not right, but it's very understandable. You know, your opponent hasn't really done much damage yet. You haven't been hit. Opponent has a blot, but there's just too many problems. A lot of strip points. 6 1. It's looking at hitting. Tough play. Tough roll. I'd make the bar point. You're leaving just ones and threes, and uh, you're you're being productive. Just leaves ones and threes, two blots. Might as well make the bar point, get the four prime, if you're going to be leaving this many blots, in my opinion. Looking at different plays, trying to uh, see uh, if they can find something uh, creative and interesting and powerful. Don't blame them. It's not a good roll at all. Certainly justifies the take. This is just too strong. If you get missed, you have a chance to make a 5 prime. And your opponent has no board. You're going to leave shots anyway. It seems, seems, seems to me to be right. But um, you got to look at it. I wish we could hear what the players were saying. But they make the right play by a large margin. If you're going to leave shots, you might as well do something that accomplishes something. 2-5, and there, there you go. It pays off. They miss. And now a very powerful position for Schiller and Friesen. These players are having too much fun. Uh, ben laughing with uh, Larry. All right, this is a very reasonable decision, I think. You anchor up and you just dump the five off of the stack point. Perfectly reasonable. Five three. Huh, so they, they're going to run out here and play the three down. I guess the idea is your opponent doesn't have any blots. When your opponent's two blots and no board, this is uh, as good a time as any to run. This is, uh, I think that may be the right play. They have a 28, 22 pip lead after the roll. It's just ones really to hit. Uh, I, I think that's right. I don't. I don't think you make these. Uh, I mean, yes, you. You can leave a blot. You're making the four point, but why do this? I, I like the initial play. It's a very interesting, creative play. The safe play now. I mean, the idea here is you're making the home board point. But also, you've got that blot, bar, blot on the bar that's going to be, you're not going to be able to make that 5 prime. You're not going to be able to cover it as easily. You're going to have some trouble getting around. I don't, I don't know. I like the initial idea. Actually, either 13-5, the, the ultra safe play, or the interesting play earlier would have been good. We've got Edel Laughlin here. He doesn't know what he's doing. It's all right. Um, neither do I. Um, so we've been having some trouble with the audio here, so um, from the players. So hopefully we'll get some expert commentary here. Eight to one for uh, Fleetwood and McGrill. Now Schiller and Friesen still have to uh, get out. Um, double twos is the role.
It's really too bad we can't hear the players. They they all have interesting things to say about this game. So, actually, yeah, they should have just run all the way to 16. You want to try to clear that point, even if the cost of leaving a temporary shot. It, fours would have been duplicated if they left a shot on the bar. On the bar point. And they would have uh, had made more progress towards clearing. 6-3 in... 41. So, uh... Is that a 61? 41. Wow. Oh, it looks like... Yeah, it's all... The, wow. Everything's messed up. Oh, this... The cam it's the camera angle, I think. 4-1, what do you think? Bring it in and play 6-5? This seems reasonable. Otherwise, you're just burying a checker. I like this play. I think, I think look at five to four. That just visually isn't trouble. Well, your threes are okay. It makes his fours good because their fours are blocked. I think if you think about that. What do you mean? Who's fours? So his fours, the the brown, uh, blue is fours are blocked by the eleven point. And well, fours are fine with eight. You have more fours to play if you play six to five than five to four. I prefer for six to five. Yeah, but the four Let's goes see. to a good spot next time. You know, that's Six to one actually is what the bot likes the best. A little surprising to me. Like just yeah, bury I a checker. That too. Just you keep 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 a good distribution, more spares. But Ed Laughlin, one of the uh, top back end players there is. So are they forced to bury a checker here with a five two? Huh. Um, double twos. Actually, the, the, so XG agrees with burying the tackle, but it wanted to slot the four point instead of going five to three. Since double twos is a good shake, you get to, uh, do some work towards clearing your 18 point. Make the two point from that stack. Six five. I'm going to depart. Sure. I got a match, I think. All right. Oh, well, thanks, Ed. Um, six five comes in. They, uh, clear the 11 point. The idea is they want to maintain some contact, but unfortunately the contact doesn't work in their favor because they have no timing. So maybe XG thinks it would have been better to clear the midpoint. Um, 6-1, and now this is what happens, although it would have happened either way. The timing's bad. You have to leave a shot. Now, they, they immediately make the five point, and now they look for a six. You can't give up the anchor. You just get gammon too often here. This, this play seems clear to me. Double threes, it misses, but it cleans up. Comes around the corner. 17 pip lead for freezing and killer, so, they, so this is nothing that double sixes can't cure. Double four is obviously also an excellent shake for uh, McGrill and freezing. What do they roll? 3-1, three, 3-1, one, three, one, nothing special there. They make the three point because they might get a fly shot right away. So instead of slotting the four, they decide to make the three. Plays are plays are pretty close. Well, this is right. This that was well the right idea. Seven to three was another option. All very close. Five one. Make the ace point. This way they just uh, don't leave a shot. Double threes catches up a bit in the race. So they're definitely going to come in with, with both checkers, I would assume. And then play 6-3. to three. You want to keep the 4 points slotted in case of the race. I think you make the play that caters to the race, which is keeping the 4 slotted, not putting an extra checker on the ace. And that's right. You're only down 7. 5-1, and that forces them to break the 6 point. If they were to avoid leaving any... Well, they can clear the 10 point. That's got to be better. Yeah. Clear, if you take one off of the 10 point, you're only leaving 4, 3, and 6, 1 to hit. Clearly worth it not to leave to break the 6 point and leave your uh, two outside points isolated. You'll probably have to leave a direct if you do that. Or at least it's very likely. This seems the right ace. Again, it's best for the race. Now, uh, big roll here for McGrill and Fleetwood. 6, 5, okay. 
they're going to run out all the way around and uh, catch up to within two pips in the race. Three two. Now, do you make the safe play of make you make the inner board point, hoping to attack next turn if the opponent doesn't roll a four or a six? Maybe, but then you only have five and ones to hit, so it's not like you get as much benefit. Ten to five is the best play to bear in. That's another point. As Ben says, they will hit loose. I'm starting to like this play. I don't know. It doesn't hurt you that much in the race. I like keeping the attacking chances going. Although you can still attack with this play, right? You can roll an, any combination of ones, twos, and fives. You can either pick, pick, hit, and make the deuce, or I don't know. It's got to be close. This is that was uh, that was right. And the thing is, you still have good chances to attack with this play. So McGrill going through the numbers that uh, could be bad for each side. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
They've already played an ace because they they feel confident that there's no reason for them not to play 11 to 10 whether they come out or not. And that's a good point. You always do that. Roberto Litzenberger here, Arena Litzenberger. So you're doing live commentary? Now? Yeah, although well, I'm trying to be a little let when the audio is good enough that we can hear the players talking about their decisions. I'm trying to think it'd be better for people to hear from Paul McGrill than from me. So. Uh, So McGrill says run, XG says stay, but it's it's a tough decision, right? You're you're counting up, you know, how do each of the rolls affect you? And uh, double sixes, well, that's pretty good. Double ones, it's not quite as good a set. Six one. Double fives, and this is uh, quickly losing any interest. Double threes, too little, too late. Three two, takes a checker off. And that ends it. And, uh, two, two. So at this score, 2-2, two, two, it's 50% match equity for each team. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I have some of those memorized. I have all the numbers where they're equal yeah. score memorized. So what about 15 away, 15 away? 15 away, 15 away, do the calculation. It's actually, it's also 50% because mentally there's a line that goes right down the middle that's 50%. So you can kind of do that. One away, one away is 50%. If you're as good a player as the other one. And that's the go. big if. Because that's the really hard thing to know what your true match equity is. Hey. I know zero away scores very well as well. All right, five away for each player. So the gambling values are a little high if both players are doubled. So it does affect checker play a little and, and cue back in a bit. Um, for example, XG will make the two point with 6-4, as I was about to say. And actually, that was the opening roll, that at five away, this is what XG likes. Not huge if you really don't like making the two point. Certainly, uh, there's room for taste to, uh, to, to make the splitting play. Well, what's great about 6-4 actually opening is a lot of people actually don't know the correct replies. Yeah. And even at regular score, 6-4 is actually dead even about the other plays, but a lot of people do not know yeah. how to do the 6-4-3. Um, yeah, so this is down. This is right. You're never supposed to break to the inside of the board. There's no splits to the inside, which are correct yeah. after 6-4 point. That is, that is right. You're, you're, you're really sliding a lot more. 3-2. Bod preferred to actually do the reverse split there. Uh, put it, um, oh, they haven't picked up their dice. They haven't hit the clock. And this is the right play. You're, um, you're, um, you, you need to get the back hackers moving a little now that your opponent has some priming chances, but you don't want to step into the four builders with by doing the major split. So the minor split is uh, better. This isn't a huge mistake, of course. Can't be a huge mistake. Well, doesn't look likely to be a huge mistake. Um, 
thing is with making the 6-4 two-point, right, you, you, it does make the opening replies a bit harder sometimes, but it also creates a very difficult game for that sort of player to play, especially if you like playing purely, playing for priming, and now all of a sudden you've got your deep point, you're trying to construct a game around that. It makes it difficult for to play maybe further down the line which may offset uh, the advantage you get off of the immediate mistakes. At least for me, I find it that way. <laughs> 43, makes the bar, justifies that 3-2 uh, down. If you want to commentate, you might want to sit here because you'll be close to the mic. 5-3, right. makes the point, easy play. Now our audio is coming cutting out once again. Up one. Yeah, Black's got a uh, really has to get those back pieces moving, it looks like somehow. Yeah. They're gonna start getting really hemmed in. Yeah, this could be a time to split. The opponent eight points stripped. Yeah. I mean, that's normally your go ahead to say go ahead and split. Yeah, if the eight points stripped, as Roberto is saying here. Um, it definitely makes splitting more indicated. Um, I know I understand wanting to make the five point, but the opponent's a better board, which is usually an indication not to slot. Um, I, I would split here. Yeah, I, I, would, I would go ahead and split as well. And let's see what the bot thinks. The bot slots, the bot plays uh, the simple 13 to 7. It does, really does not like splitting. Let's see if that changes on a higher evaluation. Doesn't like splitting or slotting. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I guess the reason for not splitting, I mean, post facto, is he doesn't have those good numbers, you know, the fives to play anywhere else and the sixes to play anywhere else because he's blocked. Yeah, that's a good point, right? You're, you're giving your opponent good numbers that are bad otherwise, so um, you might as well not give him that good six. Um, five three. And, uh, split and down. Yeah, I think you have to split. I mean, you're going to have to split his white. It's they're running all the way. Interesting. I don't like that play. But it's right, so uh, right by a significant margin. So uh, these guys know more than I do, which is not surprising, given that only one, only the players have written a classical, classic book about backgammon, not me. Um, so makes the three hits and makes the eight. Very loosey goosey, but there isn't much else. Well, I guess there is something else. They could have just made the three point. That was actually a really huge uh, error, right? So instead of playing six to one, just play 13 to eight. Only one blot rather than three. So they thought about the cube there just because there's so much volatility this turn. It actually would have been a very strong cube, but it's hard to, it's hard to get yourself to give that cube. Yeah, they're probably going to step the other checker up. To not give him the fours, they're gonna dupe the twos from coming in. So a 16 14. Seems thematic here. Well, the fours, uh, they also might want to hit on the ace with fours, given that there's so much uh, so much loose around the board, right? If you enter with 2 4, 5 4. Well, not 5 4, 5 4, you're anchoring. Yeah. yeah it's so a 13 11 to give more uh, building possibilities. Yeah, it's tough to call. It's a tough call. I wish we could hear what the players are saying. Yeah, we, need to, we need to get that camera close to what we're looking at so we're actually looking close to the camera. Yeah. With screen. I wish we could develop a system that we could see the dice big and we could type it in so our audience could see the dice really clearly. Yeah. Right, so what he's saying is he, he likes the extra building potential here. Um, the bot prefers the safer play by a little bit. Two six from the bar, two in, six down. Don't see much better. And now, again, another cube decision for white. This has got to be a cube decision. Um, 
Yes, yeah, okay. one checker back to three. It's clearly that cube. The question yeah. is if it's a take. Right, or not. right. I, I agree. Well, versus three, the boards are equal. The race, white's clearly ahead. White's only up four pips in the race. Actually. And on roll, yeah. Yeah. So they reach for the cube. They're putting it out. Friesen thinks it's a take. Let's see if we can hear what the players have to say about it. Uh, they take. Um, it's dangerous. I don't like it. Let's see what the bot thinks. It's a take. It's a take. Um, you know, I mean, the prime isn't working yet. I don't know. Race Wait, is close. The there that uh, as soon as I put in a roll. Okay. Um, Forty-four. That now it ain't a take. A, oh, Joker city. Um, let's see what the double is when I run it on better settings. It's a point one three seven take. So uh, good for uh, Friesen, for and Schiller for. Seeing that the winning chances were enough. But uh, as, as usual in back having they're punished for making a good decision. Yeah, I bet they're hoping they would have made the wrong decision there in pass after after seeing the four four. Yeah, and I guess the thing is the the prime isn't working they they have the better prime. They have escaping chances and I don't know, it's a tough one. Especially out of five away, five away score, your gammons are working so much. I, it's a tough thing to take, but uh, they did, and they punished big time. Then they fan, three two, not a great shake, but they can just spread everything out. Yeah, it's still two on the bar. I think you'd bring down three and play in. Yeah, you're leaving five five, but yeah, that's exactly. acceptable. Yeah. And they, they're calling out that double fives there. <laughs> Five four, all right. And now you're really glad you spread him out because anything without a two, well, maybe a couple of sets, you know, you're pointing on him. Double fours, double fives don't work, double sixes don't work, but double fives work. Oh yeah, they do work. There's a two though. Still got a hit. So now just the. Can you the technical lift here, decision. Or would you just not do it? What do you think? I don't. S that's illegal. The play they're looking at is illegal. Yeah. Um, you go to the three. You you're still leave. The thing is, uh, uh, I don't see why you need to lift here when your opponent's two in the air. You got a better board. You should. You're often yeah. able to re hit. I like this play. Yeah, I mean, as you said, since the gamut's always are higher, you really want to go for that G. And you get the G more by closing them out. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, you've got two... They're two up in the air. It's hard to see because they stacked him. you still got excellent chances to slash at whatever comes in. You could pick and pass for quite a while. Your boat might get four checkers on the ace point. It's sort of a best-case scenario, which is something that might happen anyway. Maybe, maybe this is right. Maybe you just sort of pick and keep... Banking on being able to pick and pass or eventually get the roll that points on him. There's enough I, I lift. out there that you can pick I lift. and pass and you can, actually, you can actually still make the point. For yeah, I like this play and uh, it's close. It's actually extremely close. They're going to make the they're going to make the point now with a lot of rolls. Yeah, so that was actually an extremely close decision. Um, the, actually, the, the lifting was right once you run on a tire segment only by point. Oh one five. So so close close decision. They get it right. At least as uh, to the degree that we can trust XG here. Now they try to get off a of double fives, but then you have to play the ace in if you really can. And they're just stepping back into double fives here. Although it's not as good because they have to leave more blots. Five three and enters one. And now you're hoping for some combination of twos, fours, fives, and sixes. Like, Six three like, like that. that. And this is trouble. Oops. 
Double threes. A couple more of these should be trouble, but they, they should be fine for now. Yeah, it's still a freeze at having that two-point man, having those two gaps makes it really hard even hitting that late shot. Yeah. If they do get it to be able to contain. Yeah. Um, yeah, you want to have, you know, the five and four points, four and three, three and two is tough. I'm going to move this a little closer to you because I talk louder than you do, okay. so it's... Uh, well, I'm going to say that a well-timed ace point game wins, you know, about you know, 15 percent of the time. This has to be less than that because uh, yeah. I don't think it's actually it's well around 17.7 percent uh, here. Or yeah, it's about 16 and change now. And so the gamut's for the, for them around what 60 in the 60s, 70s. Whoops, wait. So, so there's a fan. And now two one. It has to be in the seventies for white. At least, yeah, yeah, that sounds right, right. Five two, around sixty two percent according to four ply. Okay. Well, yeah, it's sixty two of the. No, sixty two overall. Sixty two yeah. total. Yeah. Two one. That helps a bit. I mean, you really just got to get in and hope to fill in those points and roll six to spring out. And then you really are in the game to the end. Bob Wachtel, who wrote uh, the book In the Game to the End about Ace Point End Games, is here in Los Angeles this weekend. Now the question is, are they going to peel the checker? I like, I like that. It gets the gamut. It doesn't plot on high sets. 43 fans. They're talking about backgammons? No. What's he doing? Is he joking there? Well, what do I know? So they clear the six. That, that is uh, slightly wrong. The more aggressive, the more aggressive five three four off, as uh, Roberto suspected, was right. But, uh, it still still has a good distribution, and it doesn't. Put the checker deep. I would just well, peel two here. They were joking about backgammons before, but the play yeah. they made definitely loses a lot less backgammons once they open up that single. So 4 2. I, I would have taken two off, but this time uh, it's close with uh, maybe a slight preference for their play. 6 1. 4 3, I think it's Yeah, clear. I agree. You, you, you don't, even if it's. You, don't, you need to have threes to play, you know, at some point, once you've cleared the five point. So this seems right. It's just a more efficient distribution. You have, you have every number. You can play threes, you can play fours, you can play twos. Um, yeah, six, let's see. What is the row? Come on, computer. Frozen. All right, so three two they cleared. It seems right. You got to clear off that strip point there. Yeah, the screen's freezing so much. We should be sponsored by that uh, movie by Disney. Oh, Frozen. <laughs> Let's see. We've got a clever one here. Uh, four one, good roll, easy play. Six five runs both checkers. It really cuts down on the back ends. Yeah, that's that's a good roll, good play. Six five. Oh, great number. Nice number. Yeah, now if White ever gets hit, White has a lot of checkers off, so five two. There we go. No, there's eight checkers off, so if they're hit, he's going to have at least nine off. And they're talking about how many checkers they want to get off before they're hit as well. And that's a shot. There you go. Ten off. Five a three. It's a big miss. You run one checker here? Yes. Yeah, you should run him out uh, a little bit. Bring him, what's that, to the 19? 
I don't know if I've run them all the way. Yeah, that doesn't make much sense. Well, oh yeah, you get it out. It does cut down on backgammon more to run it out. Um, oh, but the gam the gam backgammon matters less than the gammon at this score. Six one play safe. This this was probably right actually their play. Yeah. Oh, that's that. six saved six. Say they're going to joke around about not saving the backgammon and then they'll go save the backgammon. Or are they thinking that at the score maybe they stay back? It has to be wrong. I can't imagine that this is right. We need a new chapter of Wachtel's book if this is the right play. And it isn't. Ooh, but they 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 want to make it dramatic. They know there's an audience here. They want some fun, and it is oh, over. Oh, it's a backgammon. Oh, it's a big roll there. It ends with a blunder and a backgammon. All of a sudden, it's over. Yeah, you do not. Uh, you do not even. At, um, so uh, where's cube information? Um, yeah, they get back gammon value compared to the gammon value is around where it normally is. Another point five. Three, so you got a normal principles where you save the back ham and certainly apply here. Yeah, I think they got full because look how they got to close the board with perfect efficiency yeah. there. That just looked too good. And but so the thing is, if you that. already have a closed board, you're still you know you're not you're saving you're the back. Safe. You're always yeah. saving the back ham. So um, with an even number of checkers against you, it doesn't yeah. matter how nice your board is unless there's some yeah. special score where. So for thirty dollars, buy uh, from the what's the name of the book? Uh, in the game to the end, the winning to the end. point end games by Bob Wachtel. Yeah, and that would save you from making this mistake. Yeah. Good job. Well, thanks to everyone for watching. Congratulations to Fleetwood and McGrill on their uh, victory. Um, signing off from the voice of Backgammon, and Jack Edelson. And just to remind you before we go, check out our sponsors, um, GammonStuff.com. Great place for boards, dice, and of course stuff. Thanks for uh, watching. See you next time. No, no. I just want to make sure because I started talking about people and stuff. No, no. Well, say, say nice things about people and it won't matter. Oh, no. Well, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. I said too well, nice things about people. Like, no. Awful. Was he recording well, we, you? Well, we're missing part of the first game because Team Viewer conked out and came up on the screen when the internet died. We couldn't hear you guys like half the time. Well, yeah, that's that's sex, sex, sex was you, you can't. You got to save the back of You know that. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh, you, you gotta save the back end. You should have invested in buying that book and they Wait. into the game to the end. Bob Wachtel's here, you know. That's right just there. Bobby. Ask him what the right question is. I'll tell you four or three left. left. He has a four on the two. We were just talking. Didn't know he had this because he was commenting over in Cyprus and Carter's that when they leave at four, whether it's three. And I, I, I was just talking to Bob about it. I mean, there are scores where that's not true, right? If back right. gammons don't matter much, but they oh, do no, they matter. matter. Yes. The back gammon value over the gammon is 0. 0.5 three, something. You go to two. So yeah. it doesn't so you really matter that much. DFD, you know, well, right. I thought well, this was listen, wrong. you guys are doing this, and you're doing a great job. Huh? Yes, it was a take. Fuck yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we both knocked you for that. Misbehaving? What's misbehaving? A book. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah Miss Yeah, you, if you I, read, yeah, 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 yeah. I wasn't sure if you told me to read it or if you if it was just a book that came no, out. That's any, that's that's it. Here it comes. Uh, no, 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 it, that it was a huge take, by the way. One four seven. Yeah, we, we, were, we, we were giving you guys shit for that, but it was right. Fractals, man. Fractals. Yeah. 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 It's not it's not Richard Teller, but it's one of the behavior like your PR budget better than it race. Yeah, yeah, freeze, well, freeze, I was talking with freezing so much that we got to be sponsored uh, by Jesse Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's all Fowler. Really oh, so I mean, I read that about the flow. I actually think that's somebody. somebody. Yeah. Always, the four checkers, always, this unless the score is weird. We thought it was pretty pretty even because, yeah. Misbehaving, it's not Richard at Dallas. I have the book. God, it was that Yeah. No, no, no. I have not stopped the stream. Maybe it is. FYI. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah. It is Tyler. It is Tyler. Yes, yeah, okay. yes, I have read it. Yeah, yeah. I love that book. But it is, there's the other book. Yeah. Oh, we're going to play uh, a new love. love. The heart is called the success equation. Untangling love and skill in business and sports and investing. It's all about the love skill paradigms. We're talking about it. Are you out of school yet? Okay, Larry Schiller, voice of backgammon. It's an honor to lose to Paul McGraw and Blake, Blake Fleetwood. We wish them the best of success the rest of the tournament.